I've now got 20 subscribers. So my fan club is growing. Um, I'd like to tell you today about the oddest, weirdest, strangest uh, wrong that, that ever got in the cab. So probably two or three years ago, I stopped for a chap after 12 o'clock at night. And when he got in, it was a bit like when, when your cat, the fur on the back of your cat's neck stands up because he's it's not right. <clears throat> so he says to me, he's got forty pound cash. If it goes above that, he's paying on card. Okay. Um so we're driving along and he says to me, Would you mind if I took my trousers off? Well, why do you want to take your trousers off when we're in stockings driver? Yeah, all right then. You can't see anything, can you? Well, <laughs> what makes you think oh, I want to see anything? Okay, would you mind calling me Jane? Yeah, all right then, Jane. So, next thing I hear him go, oh, bollocks. I've spilt my Coke. So I've now stopped the cab, got out. He was going to get out there. I was going to have him out of the cab. I've opened the back door... <laughs> And laughed when I see his, st his stockied legs. Um, <clears throat> it looked like it had been snowing in the black in the back. So I, it, it's probably just gone over at least forty quid now. The fair. So I said to him, "Now listen, for want of a better phrase, I've bent over backwards for you. You are now paying cash. Do you understand? Yes. But you'll have to get out and get it for me because I'm not putting my, my trousers back on." I'm glad no police cars come along and, and check me out. Um, so we pulled into a garage in Shooters Hill. It's full up with cab drivers, all trying to fill up for the next day. So he's given me his cash card and his PIN number. And just as I'm getting out, he went, Driver, see if he sells stockings. <laughs> so I've got £100 out of the cash point for him. And... Um, I've got in the queue now with all, with all the other cabbies and all I want. They're paying for their petrol. All I want is a pair of stockings. So, um, when I got to the front, there's a couple of cabbies behind me. I said, do you sell stockings, mate, or tights? He says no. And the two cabbies behind started taking a piss out of me, which is all right. Um, so I got back in. I said, look, Jane, he doesn't sell stockings or tights. And he went, oh. I'm having no luck tonight, am I? So, so take me home. So, it's the back streets of Elton. And uh, I have no shame. I had to put it on Saturday because I'm, I'm from Essex. And um, when we got outside his house, he's invited me in for a cup of tea. So, I said to him, look, no. Um, he... <laughs> I've got, I've got, I've no shame. Easy money. It was seventy pounds cash, and um, he said to me, "Cab drivers are very accommodating. Would you let me have your number, please?" So, so I gave him my number. If he ever wants to be picked up by a cabbie who, who's prepared to drive him about while he's dressed as a woman, that's that's fine, fine by me. Um, the second one that I found uh, quite funny <clears throat> is a gay story as well. I'm sitting almost dozing off at Charing Cross uh, rank and uh, a chap skips up in a pink three-piece suit uh, jacket, trousers, shoes, waistcoat, uh, belt and he, he's uh, really happy He's he wants the Admiral Duncan in Old Compton Street where he's got a hot date with a, a chap he's always fancied. So we're driving along and he's singing the Merry Wells song, Nothing You Could Do Could Make Me True. To, Nothing You Could Do Could Make Me Untrue to My Guy. And he's got quite a nice voice as it goes. And um, he says to me, what's that divine smell? I said, what do you mean? And uh, could, sometimes I've got air fresheners in the back, but people nick them. 
Um, I said, oh, it's Febreze. He went, oh, I love the smell of lavender. Would you let me have some? So I've stopped the cab and give him my tin of Febreze and he sprayed himself all over. <laughs> so, yeah, the fun, some of the funniest cab rides you, you ever have are when gay people get in. So I'll be back. I'll see you. I'll be back.